Real quick before we start this episode of Bonfireside Chat, I wanted to mention that uh, it very nearly didn't happen. We had some real severe technical difficulties going on. Um, As a result, uh, myself and our guest are all on the same track. That means there's maybe a smidge more overtalk than we like. I did my best to try to eliminate it, but I ask for your patience. Um, And hopefully these guests are uh, CJ and Patty from Twin Humanities are delightful enough to make you forget about any technical issues we've had. So uh, without further ado, on with the show. Some of our landings were desperate adventures. We are now prepared to meet the inevitable counterattacks with power and with confidence. I don't know your voice, but I know that smell. Are you a hunter? And here's where you look for my mum. Daddy never came back from the hunt, and she went to find him. But now she's gone too. I'm all alone and scared. My name is Gary Butterfield. My name is Cole Ross. My name is CJ. And my name is Paddy. And you're listening to Bonfireside Chat. It is a hunter's favourite. Yes, and this week we are talking about the second part of Central Yarnum, the uh, the aqueducts and such. And uh, as you heard, this is our first four person episode. We are joined by the Twin Humanities. Hey guys, hello, hello. Yeah. So tell our listeners about your podcast. Uh, we uh, we do uh, another uh, Dark Souls, Bloodborne, Demon Souls type podcast. <laughs> Um, we, it was generally started with, uh, Patrick getting into Dark Souls and me being nutty and not being able to shut up about it. (laughs) And, um, it was fun seeing him discover things and me applying sort of a, um, a more, a more of an enthusiast's, um, view on top of that. And we just started recording it and eventually just became very, very chatty about these sort of things and, uh, covering community stuff and, you know, whatever happens, happens during the episode. But, uh, but yeah, we're, um, we're a big fan of yours. So honored oh. to, honored to be on here. So thank you for having us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. People who listen to the show, um, a lot of people who listen to the show, listen to your show as well. Um, you know, when every time I've put out kind of feelers and are like, okay, you know, this season's wrapped up, who do you want to have come back? Um, you know, that like CJ has been on, on this show a couple of times now and people are always like, you know, get CJ back. And then someone was like, get Patty on there as well. And I was like, <laughs> why oh. didn't I do that in the first place? So I, I apologize for that. Um, yeah. you know, thanks, the, thanks uh, Facebook person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the, uh, yeah I just, it was, it was showing up my weakness. So that's why I like when people uh, point out when I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, a lot of people, you know, so people know you, um, from, from some of the more lively episodes we've had of this show. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I, uh, yeah, it is super fun. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and people, you know, a lot of people who listen to our show, listen to your show as well, um, which is awesome. So it, it's nice to have this like moment when worlds collide. <laughs> I think it's just um, like, it's like, we're, we're like the power men for, yep. <laughs> and we can find 4,996 more of our brothers. This, this is like the, 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 com- the Marvel comics event of the summer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was thinking Maximum. a bit more as the moment in like Ghostbusters where they said not to cross the streams, but they did and <laughs> save the universe. <laughs> But I, I know you. I know you tipped the hat to it, uh, towards it in the uh, in the last episode. But I genuinely think that the Souls community is just amazing. Uh, mm-hmm. Everybody's really chatty. Um, people can push you towards things that you'd, you that you've not seen, or pieces of artwork, or you know. There's um, we've had listeners that have genuinely turned me around with uh, with Dark Souls Two, and kind of led me further down the rabbit hole to um, hole to falling in love with that game. And you know, I I, I genuinely love talking about this sort of stuff and a big part of that is 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 the people that interact with us and you you can't ask for more than that it's, it's really humbling yeah, yeah. It, it it's wonderful like uh you know i've met a lot of people uh through the community and, and they continue to be um very fun to interact with and 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 really supportive so it's very very cool and and this season i feel like uh this season has the kind of guest lineup I've I've been most excited about mm-hmm. out of all of our seasons, and and part of that is because of that cumulative effect of that community building and kind of ingratiating ourselves within the community, <laughs> um, mm-hmm. and and me learning you know about uh, uh, different different members and everything like that, and it's it's, it's I'm really excited yep. about it. So I'm I'm excited for the social connections um, that are going to happen with that. Yeah. I wonder. So next year, like next fall, is going to be the uh, the, the 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 five year of uh, of Dark Souls, right? Mm-hmm. That's kind of crazy. 
Yeah, so yeah. somebody put together SoulsCon. I've said it before. <laughs> I'll say it again. Yeah, just the fact that we've been able to maintain this uh, this level of enthusiasm and uh, creativity and ingenuity, I think that that speaks volumes as well. But I think I think with people are still finding perspectives or, or or sharing views on the games. And even this afternoon, I was talking to somebody on Twitter, uh, and they were mentioning. You know, we had a, a little bit of a um, an artorious fest on on Twitter with somebody mm-hmm. saying like. Oh, uh, it was uh, Guy Woodward on on Twitter. Sort of said, "Oh, I started thinking about Artorius the other um, a few few minutes ago, and now I'm feeling really sad." And there was this real sort of back and forth with with Artorius and and somebody mentioning that uh, an aspect that I'd not really thought of before. And then I started thinking of like, well, maybe Artorius uh, crossed the abyss, and um, the abyss really damaged him even before he'd met Manus and everything else, mm-hmm. and he was he was hurt and. Um, something came up to him and started pining and maybe that he didn't know Sif in the main world. It was like Sif arrived to him because he was hurt after he crossed the abyss. And the more I started thinking about that, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and I love that sort of stuff. So I'd imagine people are still going to be finding takes or personal connections to it because the, the moments often when you plug moments in your own life or from talking to other people into the game, the whole suddenly becomes much richer and uh, yeah. lies is like disco bread. Yeah, the, the uh, like having people uh, guiding people through the game. My friend Will is playing through Dark Souls 2 now after like finishing Dark Souls 1 and it's really fun just to watch him like encounter things for the first time and kind of come up with, with theory stuff and being able to like gently nudge him in directions of things but then have him kind of turn, you know, turn back and mention things that surprised me and stuff. I had the, the singular, ple- singular pleasure of... Uh, letting him know that the basilisk eyes are not actually their eyes, <laughs> mm, yeah, um, yeah. which like is one of my favorite, you know, all time dark Souls details. And it was just, it was a good moment. Um, Cause I mean, that was when he was talking about it and something we talked about too, but it's just, it's fun when somebody else comes to the same, you know, we were talking about how much dark souls two plays with the fear of basilisks that mm-hmm. they've developed in, Bas- in dark souls one. And, uh, uh, and I was just like, yeah, and it's crazy. Those aren't even their eyes, you know? And he's just like, what? And then I sent him the, the, the JPEG and, and stuff. It was super fun. <laughs> the JPEG. Well, yeah, well, the, how the far was it? Question. Yeah, how far was it into Dark Souls though before somebody actually pointed that out and it was like a no, exactly moment. <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah, it's 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 so cool. Like these games are great. Um, and and this uh, and this area is great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, segue, segue, segue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People what, love what, it when what we did, do that. Uh, yeah, what, what did we do? We are masters of segue on segue on this <laughs> show. Smooth. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It was it was, it was, uh, it was I'm proud of myself. We are gyroscopically um, progressing. <laughs> what did uh, what did we do last week, Cole? Well, previously we followed Gilbert's advice and we headed through central Yarnum, our goal being the bridge to the Cathedral Ward. However, unfortunately, all that waited for us there was a mutated cleric beast and a non-functional door. So now we have to find a back way into the ward, which might involve getting a little dirty. Yeah. Let's get it's dirty. about time for my arrival. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So, so this this area, because um, we we're trying to bring these theses back, and and Cole has come up with this thesis for this area, which is uh, there's no such thing as a direct approach in Yarnum. And like one of the things that's interesting is this area that's 100 percent true. It gets less true as the game goes on, which I realized in kind of replaying this that that happens in every Souls game. Mm-hmm. Like that first area is always the most dense with alternate paths and shortcuts and stuff. This one may be the most dense first area of any Souls game, mm-hmm. um, mm. but and the, but I do feel like it kind of straightens out eventually. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous, like especially here to the degree that um, when I was putting the notes together, I realized that uh, the progression that I laid out was actually in reverse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because I started from the uh, fr- from the coffin chute on the bridge, um, you go through the area backward that way, and I yeah. kind of had a little glimpse of that feeling like uh, when we were when we did Blight Town, and I talked about how I didn't realize that um, there was any other way but going through the uh, the uh, Drake the Valley, the, yeah, the Valley of the Drakes, mm-hmm. right? And so I had to go back and use the guide to actually relay this out to <laughs> yeah. uh, to make it more in line with everybody else's you know kind of view. It's happened to me though a few times within. Uh, this area where I've gone, oh look, you can you can just go over there and you can get to it. But I know the steps to go the long way round, and they <laughs> stick in my mind more than just say dropping down a bit and then yep. uh, sort of going the the shorter route, which yeah. is crazy. Knowledge and, has compressed that space. Yeah, yeah. And well, they also and they incentivize going through all of the routes just with little treasurelets and such. So it becomes kind of like um, 
it avoided the pitfalls that something like uh, uh, like um, a, a common criticism of, of Deus Ex 2, which is a game that I, I think is underrated a little bit, is that it has alternate paths, but because it was for the console, the areas are so small that like the alternate paths are right next to each other and are both really short. So there's no there's no incentive to use one over another. You just go back and do both. Mm-hmm. Um, here, it's that's kind of true as well. The paths are very similar and very close to each other, but there is incentive to go back back and do both because you're looking for these little NPCs, these houses with incense. You're looking for treasure and you're looking for like these interestingly designed encounters and stuff. So like I ended up combing this area all the way, even though at many areas I was going backwards yeah. through it. But if you if you know the the right way to go, you can actually the beeline is actually pretty short. Yeah. Um, just that all of that is a way of saying that for people listening to this, um, we're not necessarily going to talk about this in the same order that you went through it. Mm-hmm. And it is going to be rather than a linear thing, kind of a set piece based uh, discussion. Um, just so you know, uh, because the area kind of resists <laughs> an A, B, C, D, E order. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it makes the most sense to like start from the lamp, right? Which is a well traveled lamp, and we opened up that uh, that shortcut last time through the bridge uh, residence, you know, Gilbert's Gate, and mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. this gets us a really good view of what I know now is the Cathedral Ward, right? But yeah. um, you know, it's a it's a beautiful view, and you know, like w- once you know that's what it is, and you know the the significance sets in. But how you know, however, your first time through, you're actually thinking like, oh, that's just more skyline. Yeah, and th- this is just to clarify. So this is by Gilbert, and this is if you go down. This is the shortcut that we used mm-hmm. to to fight the cleric beasts that went through that house. Um, but if you actually go left at the bottom instead of going through the house, yeah, you can kind of continue on. Yeah, down on the sweet little terrace that has uh, two. I'm always going to call them brick brutes, so I'm very sorry because minions is stupid. <laughs> I, I, I'm always going to call them brick trolls, which even is even stupider. But <laughs> I, I, it's I like, am that's very I'm... with you on that. Brick, they're brick trolls. They've always been brick trolls forever. <laughs> Yeah, Min- yeah, minions. They're too big to be a minion. Uh, yeah, all of, all, of, all of that lot, I, I just refer to as as the big lads. Like as <laughs> yeah. soon as I got the Kirk hammer, it was like it's like yeah, I'm not just I'm not just licking them with the threaded cane now. It's like I'm taking down the big lads with with a with a with a, with a grown ups hammer. Yeah, with the oh my God, brick yeah, fight. I, just yeah. like, I like the idea of big lads being the British version of the uh, the big boy restaurant. <laughs> Oh, you got you got a big lad. Yes, it's Reginald's big lad, <laughs> and he's just wearing a, like a cap. Yeah, he's wearing like a like, you know a cool like a pork pie. Yeah, <laughs> or a cabbie. Yeah, sorry. Um, I just like the I like the thought of it almost being like a crocodile Dundee thing. Like the guy's got the got the brick sort of hammer in his in his hand at first, and he's sort of coming out. And you're like, call that a hammer? This is a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then again, when it happened in Crocodile Dundee too. <laughs> Uh, and probably in the third one, which not a lot of people watched. Um, <laughs> he, does the, he probably makes that joke every day, like with cutlery. Yeah, like just uh, over breakfast, and then yeah. his wife just stops. <laughs> like, He's got a set of cutlery for himself, which is slightly bigger than the rest of the family. <laughs> just a progression, <laughs> like, like, a, like a cell phone, you know, signal bars of knives, and he's just like, this is a knife. No, this is a knife. No, this is Maybe. a knife. Maybe, no, this is maybe that goes on throughout the entire house, and he's just got a slightly bigger cupboard with a slightly bigger bottle of ketchup. Like everything. Like, you, uh, what if he yeah, has no, a cupboard? Call that a bed? This is a bed. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, does he have like like object permanence problems? Is he knife blind? <laughs> like, they could do a great crossover, like Crocodile Dundee versus the Borrowers, and just like really <laughs> emphasize it. <laughs> like, it's it's probably Crocodile Dundee, like crossed with Memento. <laughs> <laughs> you call that a wife this is a wife stop saying that to me you're breaking my heart yeah. i don't uh, remember any of this but i've got this massive polaroid <laughs> is that a polaroid um <laughs> regular size uh, um so yeah, these these virtual. This is one of the weirdest. Um, just segue, segue. Um, one of the the weirdest encounters of the game, though, because there's a shortcut just to go past it. <laughs> yep. Like if you have a hard time with these guys, there's just a little side path. <laughs> like somebody must have thought this was harder than it. I think it actually is. Because mm-hmm. um, they're they're kind of a pain, but they're fun to parry and like. Yeah, I always fight them because you get uh, blood vials. Like. Yeah. You know, well, so they're, it, it, they're the cornerstone of my like blood vial farming route. That, that's yeah. where I go. <laughs> So and because you can get the the bullets from inside the house too, from the guy in the yeah. wheelchair. So you can do a little bullet blood vial run. Um, but if you want to, once you get past these guys, you can just double back and go through a weird little tunnel that I was really expecting to have like some kind of significance, but doesn't. 
Um, it's trying to teach and, you that there are shortcuts. Oh wait, there. Yeah, that. yeah, we know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, so you, you head back. You get past these guys. You get to the kennels. Um, there's a drop off from up earlier um, in the area by the fountain to get here, which I didn't know about until after we recorded. Mm-hmm. Um, somebody pointed it out to me and was like, oh, you missed a shortcut. And I was like, well, shit, I, I absolutely did. Mm-hmm. Um, I, and all the time I played through the game twice and didn't even think to smash through those walls, uh, for some reason or another, but yeah, I, you I can think that was by accident. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's, you know, it's crazy. It's just like in underlying the cleric piece is optional and you can just continue on if you'd like. Yeah. Mm. I know, yeah. they, I know it's. I know it's said that they're, they're sort of kennels and stuff, but it, it, it did make me sort of smile a little bit just seeing these cages outside houses, and it's almost as if there's there's some sort of dog pound there, it was, and someone's gone like, "Well, at, at least all the dogs are safe." You're like, hmm, but do <laughs> yeah. they have to be? Let's yeah. put all the ones that are cream and beige. <laughs> let's put those outside. Yeah. <laughs> Why? I, I have a fear of stale mashed potatoes, yeah. also earwax. Yeah. What happened to you? You're not my real mob. <laughs> that mom. Lots of monsters. The, the, uh, yeah, exactly. Well, and they're, and they're going to go crazy. Like, I always feel bad killing all these dogs in cages. Yeah. But I quit because I can't handle them barking at me, mm-hmm. um, which stresses me out. So I end up killing, <laughs> like, just a dog massacre every time I go through here. Well, if you run by them, they'll break out. Um, do, do all of them break out or just some of them? Uh, I don't know. Maybe some of them do, but I've definitely had them uh, uh, come out. I, hmm. I, I love the environmental storytelling here because obviously if there's if there's a hunt, right, they're going to be using the dogs to sniff people out. And I have to imagine that they are transformed and rabid like they are because they've been they've been feasting on scourge blood. Yeah, mm. they've been supping up. Yeah. And 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 you you will run into hunters that actually use a, use dogs with them mm-hmm. um, a little bit more in, uh, in a couple areas from now. Um, that happens a lot in the cathedral ward, actually. Yeah. Um, and near the church. But yeah, here it is just like uh this is where they store the dogs when they're not hunting me. <laughs> Good job they haven't got the chimes from Dark Souls, because you could just be standing in front of the cage and like kill one of them, and then just like, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> like, Hello. <laughs> Good, Good boy. boy. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and specific ones. Yeah. The uh after you cross this little bridge, you run into a, an NPC. Again, this is the uh, the lonely old woman. Mm-hmm. Here. And there's a dog barking at her door. You have to kill a dog to to safely check her out. Yeah. And uh, she she hates the hunters. Yeah. So, you know, if they did their job, the people of Yarnum wouldn't be trapped inside so long. And she wants us to find a safe place for her to go, um, which we can know of one mm-hmm. now. Um, we don't know. But if in the very beginning, if you uh, if, at this point, we can teleport back to uh, the sick room. Mm-hmm. in uh Yosefka's clinic and go talk to Yosefka. And uh she'll send us say to send people there. Yeah. And uh you know and that can be a safe place or so it seems. <laughs> um we're not going to do that though. And I yeah. can't go in any further than that, but just you know not a good idea. Yeah. Definitely. That that is a place where quest lines go to die. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, um, it depends so- how you feel about the NPC in question. Do you like that, that, <laughs> That's kind of true too. Like it is, it's not, uh, yeah, it is. I'm looking really looking forward to that episode. Mm-hmm. Um, we can start talking about, uh, Yosefka in detail cause she's super interesting. Yeah. Um, at this point though, we were making our way to the place where we're ultimately going to send her and she's going to have her kind of development. Right. Um, so unlike the other, since she kind of interacts with more NPCs and stuff, we're not going to go into her at the end of her quest. Um, you know, Gilbert, it, Gilbert just stays there. Like Gilbert gonna Gil, um, so that felt you know a little bit better. This one we're gonna leave her until uh, we actually talk about that area, right? In a couple episodes, yeah. And just past her house is the uh, is the dry dock, which is kind of one of the main set pieces of this area. Yes, and uh, and we're introduced to a new enemy here, the uh, the large huntsman. So so these guys are like are straight up werewolves, yeah. Um, not in wolf form, but in <laughs> werewolf form. <laughs> Um, they're like and they, they're like mid transformation. They're sort of halfway there, and they thought, "Ah, that's good enough." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they they got they got interrupted, um, and they, they wolf uh, interrupted. Yeah, wolf interrupted. I like that. Sorry. I like that. Some of them have almost got kind of these Steve Perry journey jackets on. <laughs> yeah. Almost like they, they've just gone out and he said, like, "Here we stand," because <laughs> they've got the big microphone stands as well. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, yeah. Well, it, it's funny because like some of them have been. They do have the microphone stands. It's either microphone stands or they've been sawing because <laughs> um, they have those like thrushers. Um, but uh, these, yeah. these guys, I love these guys because they're fun to parry. Mm-hmm. Like they're they're spending the like the first half of this game is full of people who are super fun to parry before they introduce all the enemies that if you fail parrying them you just die. Mm-hmm. I'm terrible um, at parrying. 
I was terrible in Dark Souls at parrying and throughout the majority of this game, as soon as I got the torch, I was like, yay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would probably argue that the one with the, the microphone stand is quite hard to parry. I think I've died to him more than many other enemies in the game. Yeah, his, yeah, his real back is is pretty hard to uh, to read. He doesn't telegraph much. Mm. And, and if you and miss he one, he's just like, combo, 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 you're <laughs> dead. Yeah, that, that downward stab that he does. Because <laughs> yeah, now that you can be hit while you're down. Because like, mm. you, you, know, you get hit, you get knocked on the ground, and there's nothing to stop him from just finishing you off while you're down there. Um, kind of a bummer. Oh. Um but we can actually make our way to a secret area here if we don't want to attack these guys yet. If we bust through some boxes, we can get up onto the rafters. Yep. Yeah. Uh, to uh, to an NPC that I completely missed my first time through the game. Yeah, she she is. She's and meant I, to be. I think meant you to be missed, missed it as well, didn't you, CJ? You, you missed him. As, you missed this one as well, didn't you? I I think I, I think I must have got there because I gotten the um, the gesture from her. Mm. Um, it's just that I I don't know. I I really want that uh, that kind of feathered cape for myself and uh, she looks like she knows andy warhol <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. of course we are talking about uh, eileen the crow yeah mm-hmm. i love the silhouette she cuts she has such a striking design like yeah most of the costuming in this game is is, is really good but this is a standout like it's the first non like leather strap person that you see yeah yeah, yeah. true <laughs> and and as much as i think the plague mask is kind of overdone mm-hmm. like mixing it with this bird outfit makes it work because it is already kind of beak like um so it's not like just like oh she's dressed like a plague doctor steampunk you know um <laughs> it, it is like a, a a group of elements that work well together well on, the, on this design as well it almost looks like um fancy dress like i, yeah. I know there's this there's, there's the parts of the game uh where you'll you know you you go to doors and people are getting drunk and are, are, are laughing and stuff and i i'd love how that sort of throws me off anyway almost like they've used the full paint box uh not just oh things are really really terrible that you'll get sort of these almost like monty python people that would will be speaking to you as well as um you know the the laughter and the parties that are going on but it's almost as if because the design's so simple and so brilliant that she could almost have walked out of one of one of those parties it's like a fancy costume ball like the like the uh the masquerade section of uh labyrinth (laughs) Yeah, yeah. When, when, during when, uh, as the world falls down, when the labyrinth soundtrack plays and uh, and, and Bowie sings to Jennifer Connelly, that's what it looks like. Like she looks like she's from that scene. Yeah, it is. Well, the- that that gesture, I would I would buy any jacket that would let me successfully use that gesture, especially at the end of an argument. Why drop the mic when you can do that? Yeah, <laughs> she she is the queen of gestures. Mm-hmm. Like the gestures you learn from her are the best, and 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 her quest line is one of the harder ones to follow. Mm-hmm. Significantly harder than the other ones because we don't know this yet, but she is a covenant leader. Yeah, like they hide mm-hmm. covenants so fucking well in this <laughs> yeah. game. Uh, but she is one of the covenant. Imagine if Sigmeyer uh, had a covenant, the Onion Bros. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you had to complete his quest to become an Onion Bro. Like yep. layers you know, upon layers. <laughs> layers. Yeah. <laughs> I, nope, I, no crying here. Yeah. <laughs> I love her theming too. Like you know, you talk about the, the 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 plague doctor mask and like, oh, those were a thing because the miasma theory of disease said that there was bad air or whatever. But it actually serves a purpose for her having that like incense, you know, plugging up her entire uh, sense of smell. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Cause she doesn't want to go crazy from blood, mm-hmm. you know, which is, uh, it's tempting. And, uh, you know, especially when it's pungent, mm-hmm. like she doesn't drink, she's a teetotaler. <laughs> um, as, as far as this stuff, uh, she like, she's, I like her because she like, she's kind of the, the Sigmeyer of the, or not the Sigmeyer, the uh, Solaire mm-hmm. of the game. But like, infinitely more badass than that like she, she like she this like she's awesome like she she hits my like, like the cool factor for me in a big bad way like i think this character is really well designed and has the voice acting is really good mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. just and just badass which like i don't like describing things as badass and just leaving it there because mm-hmm. i try to be eloquent <laughs> in that but like she's badass she plays her cards close to her chest at the start too like she's really yeah. enigmatic in this first in this first go she seems to be both encouraging your hunt and kind of like denigrating the idea of the hunt at the same time yeah yeah and you know, eventually... i always got more of a i got more of like a latrec vibe off of her i always thought she kind of looked a bit evil mm-hmm. mm. i think it's the dual knives like they, they just look like dangerous yeah. in a way that some of the other ones are is like i'm gonna i'm gonna stab you many many times quietly <laughs> well the, the uh one of the one of the weird things this game does uh 
in you know it, it, it's beholden to a lot of tradition. Um, but one of the things it does is it hides its Latrec figure. So it doesn't look obviously evil. Yeah. Like in past games, like the Latrec just stood on a cliff with spiky helmets and like was like, oh, you, you're here. You know, like just sounded like it wants to, you know, murder you with his voice. And now you know, they actually the Latrec figure in this game is like, hello. You know, <laughs> a bit of a he's spot. really nice. Yeah. He's like, oh, how are you doing? Um, whereas they make this person who is uh, actually like a pretty solid bro, um, you know, have that kind of dangerous theming. To her, to her visual appearance. Yeah. But that goes the other way because I always, without getting too much into it, I always thought Latrec was actually kind of a good guy without <laughs> going down this rabbit hole. <laughs> He's sort of trying to accomplish the same goal that I always think is the right end. Hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 See, the editor's note, see Twin Humanities episodes, <laughs> whichever ones you talk about. That in. Yeah. yeah. Um, Anyone where he comes up, we bicker about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so she's not from here, right? Like she bonds with you a little bit over that. She is also from a distant land. Um mm-hmm. and you don't really know this until you until you read her uh her equipment descriptions, but she is part of a she she is part of this kind of sect of hunters of hunters, right? Who have yes. kind of come to Yarnum to dispose of these uh of these corrupted hunters, the ones who have uh, uh kind of drawn too close to the bestial nature of the profession and um to uh kind of like bring sky burial back. Yes, and not the not the corrupted hunters that the other person is hunting. Yeah, that are also corrupted hunters. The different corrupted hunters. <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> the uh, and you can if you want her stuff, um, you can kill her now, if you want. Um, you have to kind of make her fall off the the edge to do it. Um, but it's it's semi worth it if you're doing a dex build and you don't care about her quest. Um, I did my arcane arcade skill arcane and skill build um, mm. with the two daggers. It just yep. gives you a blade of mercy. Um, and they're great. Like, they're yep. really good. Um, they, they attack faster than anything in the game. They cost nothing to use. So you can just combo lock, like, everything. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. so they're, and they're really a good. super, super cool transform. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love it. Like, uh, it just looks really cool. <laughs> they're made of meteor uh, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is <laughs> weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, but I, I don't like killing her because she's such a solid bro. Yeah. Yeah. There is something um, ironic of knocking somebody off the edge that's dressed as a bird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She didn't it's, it's like all those those drinks you could <laughs> knock off the edge in uh, Dark Souls 1. <laughs> all you've um, got to do is believe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the, it, was never the, it was never the white ribbon. Um, <laughs> yeah. the, you, mean uh, the, you mean the feather? I, I meant that I was making a reference to a thing we're going to find later. Oh, okay. I, th- I thought it was a ribbon for some reason in Dumbo because I haven't seen Dumbo in a long time. Hmm. You have to forgive me for not watching movies for babies. Um, <laughs> kind of, this kind of seems like something somebody would know. Yeah, no, only babies know that. Okay. That's baby knowledge. <laughs> they know two things. Baby Shitting knowledge. And Dumbo. Uh, <laughs> that's why you keep finding uh, all the uh, babies' knowledge pickups in this area. <laughs> yes, some babies must go mad for posterity. <laughs> yeah. Baby skull with massive ears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we mentioned um, those those hunters that are strung up. Um, those are probably from her. Mm-hmm. Um, somebody pointed that out on our Facebook page. I bet you it's in the, the responses. But that's you know that's cool. That's probably true. Yep. Like those are people that she killed, and we catch her when she's taking a break. <laughs> just, <laughs> you know? just just hanging out with a bunch of barrels that obscure her silhouette. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> she loves to hang out by things that obscure her silhouette, mm-hmm. as we'll find later. Yeah, I like to think that 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 massive mask as well. If she is taking a break, could maybe hide like a croissant or something like that in there. <laughs> she's just like, she's like, hum, dum. it's almost like it's a, just... a horseback. For, <laughs> for, 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 for crow it's ladies. Full of mixed nuts. <laughs> yeah, she does. She just tips her head back and yeah. looks like, ah, oh, cashew nuts. Um, <laughs> wait, I got a dried cranberry. Ooh, it's a Brazil <laughs> nut. <laughs> Yuck. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah, said she's she percent peanuts. To the Someone will now, pay for that this night. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Deconstructing Bloodborne continues after the news. Yes. <laughs> Um, oh mm-hmm. man yeah so one of those hunters you can cut down has a saw cleaver which uh no the, the spear saw cleaver. spear saw spear there we, we go did you like the the saw cleaver and wish that it was like 12 pixels longer <laughs> then this is your weapon because it is the very similar yes it is like, very and similar. When, and, 
Doesn't it have higher decks? Yes, it does. Yeah, it has a little bit higher decks. Yeah, more reach. Like a little too. bit less. Yeah, but like, not not significantly more reach. Like it yeah. felt very similar to me. Yeah, I liked oh. uh, I liked it because my my usual uh, my usual mode on the sock lever was to use it in the shorter form. So like mm-hmm. that was the same, but it would give me just like oh like if I need to reach something, it'll give me a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's the, it's it's somebody, the, my, it's the mildly crocodile kind of. Dundee of the saw of the saw <laughs> weapon. That's mildly. That's not a saw cleaver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as, as an axeman, reach was always like you mm. get really good reach with that. I, I yeah. didn't find that much need for it, but I tried to use it for a little bit um, on my on my skill build. Yeah, like right out the and, gate. Uh, yeah. But, yeah um and yeah. uh like you just kind of make your way down this uh this dry dock right which i never took yarnum to be a naval town not like a naval town but like you know it kind of seems landlocked right it yeah it seems in the middle yeah definitely yeah it's like a, it's like I, a sort, sort of canal isn't it because I, I like the, the the two bits is it is it the bit with the boats yeah 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 because i like that that there's there's two sort of raised platforms either side and then the uh, the little sort of tunnels off off there almost like they could lift the boats up so i think one of them is lifted yeah um and he's in the air and they could just sort of take them and either place them there or took them away i thought that was a nice bit of environmental storytelling that made it feel more like a place i guess yeah so i guess they could go out the locks and stuff and get to uh but like the the only like real body of water we ever see is the lake by Bergenworth, mm. and that's really it um yeah i mean there's another lake that you can see there's a couple of places where there there's water on the horizon mm-hmm. on the way there. Um, like, uh, I want to say in, uh, Hemmick Carnal lane. Yep. Um, oh, as yeah, you make yeah. your way around, um, like, so there's a couple of places, I guess it could be the same lake as Bergenworth, but the geography is a little bit yeah. tricky. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it could make its way out to the lake. It doesn't seem like it does mm-hmm. from here. It seems like they're just sewer boats <laughs> to oh, me. Like, like it's literally, right? yeah, like sewer gondolas. <laughs> Like it's Yarnum's version of a tunnel of love. They've just not gotten around to painting it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, if you guys have ever been in a tunnel of love, like there's probably some shit in that water. Like this is, this is not that dissimilar than that. Um, it's, it's like Venice, but the water's slightly less full of feces. <laughs> yeah. It's a slightly cleaner Venice. It's slightly cleaner. <laughs> you call that a Venice? Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm I'm not sure about this water. Well, I am better than 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 you. What do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> well, maybe maybe yes. that's what the uh, the 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 the, uh, the larger guy with the the microphone stand. Maybe he's uh, one of the the polers, oh, the pole guys layer, for the, yeah. the boats. Oh, hey. Yeah, that, that's, there we that's go. it is. It's kind of like a spear, but that would make sense if like it had like a little point at the end for him to uh, to push off. That's pretty good. You were going to say you should, like use that pole to fish the shit out of the water. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, like it's a koi it's carp and like <laughs> pulling it out. <laughs> they walk yeah. in front of the boat so they just move the turds out from in front of it. Oh, sorry, yeah. I'm going to clear the way. Uh, yeah. I like the, the, idea. Would be the worst place to live. Eh? I like the idea of them being gondoliers because every once in a while they'll just break out into song. Do sol mio. Yeah, I didn't expect that. Yeah. <laughs> The the, the sewers weird, do they, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> um do do transition seamlessly to canals. Yep. Um weirdly enough. So and we there's rats down there, mm-hmm. which we the, which pretty much act like rats. Like just these are souls rats. Yep. Um, you know, they're not that. But down here there are a bunch of crows and then these are uh, rotted corpse enemies. Yeah. Which are kind of interesting. I love those uh, that, that those crows are perched on rafters and they just drop on you. <laughs> yeah, they're they're there to ambush you. Yeah. But the, 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 the triggering of that seems really strange because I've, I've sat there, looked at them, and walked under them like four times and they haven't moved, which is, mm-hmm. I find slightly more unnerving. <laughs> so why aren't you falling? Please yeah, fall. Why aren't you fighting? No, not So I'm going to forget about you and you're going to scare me later. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid um, being bad crow. <laughs> these, uh, these corpse guys are, are interesting just because they are, you know, when, when we don't put you know, our corpses and uh, when they're, when people aren't quite de- dead and we throw them in the sewer, this is what happens, I guess. Yeah. Um, cause they're like mostly transformed, but their legs have rotted away yeah. and, uh, and they, they come standing, in huge numbers. Standing in the, standing in the feces all day. Yeah. yeah well, th- that could be true. Yeah. Like just bacteria, just, you know, mm-hmm. that, that's, that's really unnerving. That's gross. Yeah. They got trench leg. <laughs> Yeah, you know, just trench shins. Trench <laughs> shins I, I always thought that if, if these are the enemies that I'm thinking of, I always thought they were ladies because they kind of look like sort of, I don't know, like harpies, I guess. They this, got the this hair, something. right? 
Yeah, I, I always thought they were they were they were ladies. To be honest, I never thought they were guys. Mm. Oh. Like, mm. I, like I always read them as people uh, who uh, tried to drown themselves in the canals because they knew mm-hmm. they were sick, and you know, because of the transformation, they couldn't die, so they were you know left to live out this like pit- this pitiful existence. Yeah, yeah, they're sad. Well, maybe they were stupid and just fell in. <laughs> as, yeah, the clumsy as population. I have done, as I have done a few times. <laughs> In the, in the, the, the uh, you, you go sewer jumping in near your neck I, of the woods. I, my my first trip into those canals was um, a, a, a comedy of errors, shall we say? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I saw the ladders later. Okay. Like oh, <laughs> you're, you're talking about the game, right? Yeah, definitely the game. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> uh, the the right corpses they appear to have beards, so I would assume mm. they are men. Yeah, uh, and I'm not looking in the guide. <laughs> nope, I'm not at all. <laughs> not one. <bit>. No. <laughs> yeah. Flippy, flippy, flippy page noise. Uh, a transformation, right? Yeah. Yeah, that that could happen. It's beastie. Yeah. Um. This this most recent, if you head down this tunnel, um, there's these little side paths where there's uh these guys can ambush you, and uh, this is uh, down one of these is one of the first places I think you can find a madman's knowledge. Yeah, I believe. yeah. It's it's either down there, um, or it's up in that little annex, the sewer annex that you can get to from uh from the bridge. Uh, but you're, yeah. you're going to definitely find one later. I, I took a note of uh, finding the first one in the uh, in the crow corner up by the the little girl. But um, I already had one in my in my inventory. But yes, yeah, it, it, it is it, roundabouts here. Like what I was I was trying to fight cleric beast later, um, as I as I mentioned, I, I threatened to do in the last episodes. But I wanted to level up because I had just tons of just environmental souls. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I was able to just chomp on a, a knowledge in order to make the doll come to life. Hmm. Um, which I think I found right around here. I never realized this. Um, it, it wasn't until this playthrough that um, I got down to zero insight. Um, mm-hmm. If you do that, the doll goes dormant again. You can still level up with her, though. Yes, wow. but you can't talk to her. But she's just like sitting there, lifeless. Yeah. So you just at, you just, at yeah, this you just... point, I I had no idea about insight or my man's knowledge or anything like that. I was just kind of hunkering down and just taking in the world and sort of running around. And it was the, it was the point when I returned back to um, uh, the, the, the dream where I was like, Oh, things have changed. <laughs> so it's really interesting to, to, to now sort of see, uh, see odd videos of the early, the early parts and like, Oh, I, I had no idea about this. It's, mm. um, but that's, that's part of the fun of, of starting a, uh, either a Souls game or you know a, a, a Bloodborne, and not knowing anything, of letting mm-hmm. the dynamics surprise you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, they 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 hide they they hide what Insight does really really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and once you know, it's very fun to go through the game like <laughs> what earlier areas look like with high Insight and later areas look like with low Insight. Yeah, is fun. Mm. Um, yeah, so near this uh, person, there's a there's a ladder, a very, very, very long ladder. Uh, <laughs> a Metal Gear Solid yeah, it's a, it's a, long it's ladder. A snake, yeah, it's a snakey yeah. ladder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, which is, uh, thank goodness you can still sprint up ladders. <laughs> that makes it um, so hard to go back to Dark Souls 1. <laughs> yeah, I, I, not good, so hard. It makes it slightly inconvenient to go back to Dark Souls. Yeah, one. there's only there's only one ladder that I hate in Dark Souls one, and it's the one by the Hydra. Yep. You can go back to that episode and hear me bitch about it. <laughs> and much much uh, like Russ Frustrix like <laughs> confusion that I complain about that ladder so much. Um, <laughs> the uh, uh, you head up this area, and there's a there's a minion just kind of hanging out outside a house that I thought would be significant, mm-hmm. but it's not. Like I thought he was menacing somebody similar to the old lady, but he's just hanging out. Um, and he's got a club, so he's a little bit harder. But the, the main thing we're going to is if you go up the next set of ladders, um, we run into a pretty significant uh, NPC yeah. in the game. An NPC who continues to underline the importance of smell in this game. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I like how, because we, we've talked about, I don't want to say we're ahead of the curve, but like we've been talking about how bad the Souls games must smell for a really long time. <laughs> <laughs> like that that has been a continuing theme of the show. And now finally the NPCs in the game are talking about it. <laughs> so <laughs> well, I mean, we just talked about the shit rivers that run through Yarnum. <laughs> yeah, like I'm very keyed into factory senses, <laughs> like in in real life and in play. So yeah, um, yeah but this this is uh, just a little girl at this point. Yeah, is all she is, and she's going to mm. be. This is our first uh, significant quest line that we can kind of like almost complete. I mean, we can't quite complete. Yeah, we can do a lot of it in this one episode. It's kind of self contained, unlike mm-hmm. uh, Eileen's. Yeah, or you can miss it entirely, like I did. <laughs> I, me too. The first time through, man. Yeah. Like I, I totally missed like, it. I what? ran right what? past this window. <laughs> Like, what what um, little girl? There's no little girl. What are you talking about? Yeah, because I I was uh, I I said to Pat because I'd I'd really 
massively hunkered down in the game and was sort of exploring everywhere, whereas uh, Pad was a million miles ahead of me. Um, and I, I dropped him a text and was just like, there's been a moment here that's just genuinely stopped my heart. And he was like, what do you mean? I was like, little girl at the window. He's like, what window? <laughs> um, I mean, in, in all honesty, I'm I'm used to, games have taught me that going on fetch quests, getting the thing, returning it and snaring a, re- a reward is a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And when I got the item and returned it, to then have robbed a child of all hope, that their mum and dad are dead and they have nothing. I genuinely put my pad down and sobbed and yeah. thought like, <laughs> right, I'm going to put dinner on now. And I went into the kitchen and just it all welled up inside me again and I started crying again. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, I've not really, I don't know, that was that was something new that I'd not really seen a game do before, that they were, yeah. they were putting a human reaction into things rather than being like, oh, you've got the thing, now, now, now do this with it. Yeah. Um, mm. And even with the, the the music box, I didn't read the item description mm. and didn't realize that her father was kind of with a capital F. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, there, there was just lots of, I don't know, really emotional. There was an emotional barrage sort of there that I, I don't know, really threw me off and, and that, it, that followed through. It, it but I mean, the quest, reward, to... the quest rewards are always like, congratulations <laughs> in a Souls game. You made things a little bit worse. Good job. <laughs> no, I, I think I think this was this was genuinely something a little bit special. Yeah. And um, I think this was my first anchor into the world that as, as, as beautiful as it looked and as, mm-hmm. you know, as wonderful as the design w- was to have got my heart involved at this point uh, in the way that they did. I mean, I, obviously I might be I'm jumping ahead of myself a little bit with regards to, you know, before the, the, the gas going fight, but um, it, I don't know, it really shook me and it really stayed with me. Um, and I've seen yeah. a couple of variations on um, questions thereafter. Um, and I, I'm still really engaged to kind of see where they go on, on further playthroughs. So. Yeah. It, what, what it is, is that it is a more visceral sadness mm-hmm. that they're aiming mm-hmm. for, you know, to, to use that word, because I don't think that this quest line is necessarily like, say, sadder than, say, like Sigmire, you know, which was my benchmark for sad quest lines Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the first one. Like, that's a very profound sadness. Like this, you know, I keep trying to be useful and I can't. Mm -hmm. Like that, that's a very like relatable adult sadness. This is a more emotional, um, like, I mean, childlike sadness. Like this is, this is something that is, is simpler. It's like a simple sugar, you know, like you take it in, it is a simple carbohydrate. Yeah. And it is, it is, it is, it goes right to you so much so that like, I think that when this develops to its actual end, it kind of flips the switch to me to be like, oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, like, I, I get to the point, like everything we can do in this episode, I think is sad mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. we get to the part where we introduce the next character that she has. I'm like, I, I start feeling like, okay, I got you now. Mm-hmm. Like I get it. Like it's, it, it feels a little bit heavy handed to me at that point. Mm-hmm. At this point, I agree with you. Like, before I figured out everything this the storyline could do, I was like very very touched by it. Yeah, you know? I think I think much of much of that is down to the little girl's voice acting as well because yeah. it's stunning. Yeah. It's, it's mm, just yeah, dripping right, yeah. with emotion through throughout all of it, and the the moments that she she gasps or the moment that she genuinely seems to have that that spontaneity that children do, where it's like. Well, you could do this, and you could, you know, as an idea was mm-hmm. sort of half a half a second before her saying it. Yeah. Um, I just think it's to 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 have gotten that kind of performance is just yeah. jaw dropping. It's wonderful. I mean, it hits the like a like a little kid's naive trust in an authority figure. I mean, yeah, the first thing, like, again, going back to that smell, you smell like dad, right? Like you yeah. got that blood tinge on you. Right. And so she immediately, you know, looks to you as an authority figure who says, hey, I'm in the spot. Can you go and find my mommy and daddy, which I'm already like, oh, God, this is not going to end well. But you want to think yeah. better of it. Right. <laughs> like you want to say, like, <laughs> OK, this is a fetch quest and they're going to send me out to find an answer to this. Um, you know, in most games, like I'd say 85 percent of the time, the, the the answer is resolution. You don't think that you're going to find something awful at the other end of that, even though this is already proven to be a, an incredibly bleak world. And, you know, and and the fact that you're still kind of like establishing the rules of this, you know, we're really early on in the game. Um, You know, Mm -hmm. the the, 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 the way that this shakes out, if you, you know, A, find her and B, figure out the way to, you know, make this shake out. Um, I think it's kind of important for establishing mm -hmm. that tone. Go ahead. 
Yeah, I, I, I think as, as well that when you're a little kid, you, you look at adults as if they've just got all the answers. Like these 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 wizards that just everything they they they're just universally wise and they can get things done. And you know, there's this level of awe of us or as a child looking up at an adult and whether it be your parents or your grandparents or whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. So to, again, to, to instill that in, in the game and it for, to see, to seem this, this trusting and this honest, um, and, that you know, my, my, my parents aren't here, but I get a, a feeling from you that reminds me of them. And, you know, I, I, I'm trusting you. <laughs> it's, is is wonderful. And it's that, that, that wonderful naivety is, kind of ground out of us a little bit as adults. And I mm-hmm. think that they captured that within her response and that dialogue just wonderfully. It really affected me. Yeah. The, the the thing about when Cole, when you say like you you pursue that to its end and it doesn't end well, like it 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 you pursue it to an end and it doesn't end well. And then you pursue it to a second end and it doesn't end well. <laughs> yeah. And then you pursue it to a third end and it doesn't end well. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's where it starts trying me a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um but like, like it just it, it just pushes it a little bit further than I wanted it to. Yeah, in the I think. in the moment though, it leaves it leaves an incredibly yeah, yeah, strong yeah. first impression. And I think mm. that that's that's what I'm talking about at this point. Like it does go. Oh to, yeah, it, it does get really really goofy. But yeah, yeah. I, I just I, I just wanted to point out when you said that it just unlocked that for me. Like mm. oh, like I am I like the idea of that subversion. I just like a subversion done three times is not really a subversion anymore. <laughs> it's a new rule. You know. Yeah, yeah exactly. The um the the one of the the so she says you know go find her mommy and daddy um, and says that there's a music box that they play when daddy forgets, Mm -hmm. uh, which is really important world information because it, it is a good example of the fact that like, not only is the, the curse that the, you know, the transformation is progressive, but that people know that it's progressive Mm -hmm. and, and work for, you know, work with it, you know? So it's It's like something like, or I was just going to say like, sorry, (laughs) go, go, go 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 on. (laughs) I'll put it in don't worry. Um, it's just that the uh, that you know whatever happened to her father is happening progressively, and they have decided to work around it. Mm-hmm. You know, mm. yeah, yeah. It's given this this wonderful sort of childlike, well, like a, a parental, almost like a, a little package around it that a child can kind of understand and not worry about it with the when daddy forgets. Yeah, uh, yeah. I again, I think it's a lovely touch. It's comfort in music, right? Like every kid, every kid has a lullaby. Because the kid is like, when daddy forgets, the mom is probably batshit terrified. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And like when she goes out and that's why you're going to go find her. And she forgot the music box. Yeah. So that is that's what she's sending out with this this music box. And like, it's very interesting. The idea of the mom in this family not having that naivete to protect her uh, and really knowing what's coming is really interesting to me. Mm hmm. But you know when you know when you see families and say um, say one of the parents is really struggles with alcoholism or with violence and stuff, that often it's it, there's that kind of package that's put around the problem to 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 then sort of instill it to to a little a little kid that they they shouldn't worry about it or this is a thing that happens, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. and that's that's why I, I thought was really brilliant about the the uh, when daddy forgets. Yeah. Um, I'm, I just think it's, I don't know. It's, you know, when you sort of see um, absolute fantasy veer into the real world a little bit, take yeah. a little nugget mm. from it and then move back. I don't know. It's, it, it, it really resonated for me. Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, it's, it, it's kind of like uh, touches or tones of like when Dark Souls 2 and Hollowing, the, uh, the, the kind of the parallel to dementia with that. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we've already established that blood is alcohol. I don't know. Maybe there's something to that. Yeah. Like he's, yeah, he's a drunk. Yeah. Um, so, so if you head back down the, the canal, um, like I'll, I'll let you read this line, Cole. I was just trying to segue us, but I don't want to steal your thunder. <laughs> yeah. um, I just put it there. But if you go yeah. back down and you're headed down, you enter a ravine for pigs. Um, yeah, amnesia. <laughs> a ravine for pigs. <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, there's just this long tunnel uh, where there's this, you know, kind of varsity level enemy uh, that you have to, uh, you know, it's it's a nice risk reward. You can either take him out or you can um, um, avoid him and take a slightly more circuitous route around it. And and these things can always one shot you mm-hmm. like with a charge yep. really late in the game. The trick to this thing getting down this tunnel, and this took me forever to figure out, is just before you even go into the tunnel, just charge down it mm-hmm. because he'll always kind of huff before he charges. And these guys are a joke. If you can get behind them, yeah. um, you can fight them all day. 
So, and later when we run into these enemies, they'll play with that and they'll have, you know, different things cover you to stop you from trying to get behind them. But this one, you can just dash behind them. And uh, it's cool because you get the Saw Hunter badge, which allows you to buy the whole starting weapon set in case you have any kind of regrets. Mm -hmm. And take a ladder that gives you an advantage, you know, puts you in an advantageous position. I remember when we first saw that pig, he just kind of stands at the end of the tunnel. And (laughs) you can't tell quite what it is. Um, I think Mm -hmm. I very first saw this. Uh, when me and CJ were actually at Sony, uh, at PlayStation, uh, the Bloodborne preview and went to. And I remember sitting in my chair and looking at it and leaning over and poking CJ and going, the fuck is that? <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> I, 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 I had moving. headphones on and was... I had headphones on and was knee deep in my own game and nearly jumped out of the room because <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden like, something touched. real world had broken the immersion. <laughs> with, with pigs that big, I'm surprised the currency in Yarnum isn't bacon. <laughs> yeah, or just pig shit. Like no wonder there's so much <laughs> shit down the. It's like Mad yeah. Max. Sorry, <laughs> not sorry, mate. Sorry, mate. I haven't got any ham. Can you give change for a pork chop? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like the idea of a pork-based economy with like various like degrees of pork. Like a rump roast <laughs> is worth ten pork chops. Oh, I'm sorry, worth... I've only got shoulder bits. <laughs> yeah. yeah and here's three. Chip, here's three. I've, all, I've just got range. some some loose pocket chorizo. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> So tell, tell you what, mate, what a gift for a bit of crackling. What <laughs> I give. Oh, it takes me right back. Yeah. Crackling is what you carry like a like a money belt to stop you from being robbed. <laughs> <laughs> like if you like I you take you salted pork with you uh, on, your, on your belly. That's why they cage up all the dogs, because everybody smells like sausage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Shave and a haircut, two rinds. Yeah. <laughs> two bacon bits. Um, yeah. 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 Um, and also like all of the previous pig enemies, at least in Dark Souls One, it has a lovingly articulated uh anus and genitalia behind it. <laughs> yep. Which you can visceral attack these guys. Yep. Um and yep. you just stick your, your circular karate chop up its butthole. <laughs> like and it, it is it is uh it's graphic. Like you just you wind up and just fist this pig like like you mean it. Oh. Um, like it's like a like a poor sign fleshlight. Yeah, like, like, a, like a like a prostate prostate seeking missile. Like just, you know, I'm gonna sad, make you feel the sad part is that it is quite satisfying though. Yeah, oh, yeah eat it, pig. Yeah. You're a married man, calm down. You're a, you're a pig puppet now. Yeah, you're my pig puppet. And these are your strings. Mm. Um, oink, oink, I'm dumb. <laughs> Paul Pinocchio. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you get behind him, it puts you uh, back beyond the ambush bridge. But it's fun to talk about the ambush bridge. Yeah, we we didn't we did mention the other way to go through and hit up the ambush bridge. Um, can you make it to the front side of the ambush bridge? Uh, from, from here, yeah, from the from that ladder to the, that's to the right mm. of the ravine for pigs. Okay, yeah, 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 like yeah. it puts you right up there by the elevator. That's the like a like a ball a shortcut. Yeah, but th- this is better, and this mm-hmm. is this is kind of like this is one of the only times you run into this other than the Forbidden Woods. Mm-hmm. Um, this this kind of thing where like uh, so there's there's a there's a guy with a torch, a little shield shield wussy, with a torch and and a brick troll, and they have a big ball of something <laughs> like a, a big ball and nasty on fireable. Um, that they're gonna they're gonna roll down the bridge at you, um, and on top of it, like six dudes. Yep, six dudes who will gladly be the bowling pins for this. They didn't yeah. coordinate it. Yeah, I love that it's like a it's sort of a great set piece that there's almost a level of chorus line as the way that they run towards you. Uh, yeah. with, you know, a little frisk of Indiana Jones in the mix. <laughs> yeah. The uh, so going up this back way is really easy. Um, going up the front way. Um, I just, you know, uh, bait everyone back mm-hmm. off the bridge and hopefully some of them are still on there and get hit by the the thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never been killed by the, by the trap. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I, and, and it does, it does seem a little weird. Like there's nothing else like this in, in central Yarnum. <laughs> um, this, this is, this is a tactic you know, that we have not seen. Yeah. Why are they trying to defend the cathedral ward? Yeah. It, you know, that's, that's an interesting interesting thing and what is this meant for like this doesn't seem like the kind of trap for for a man mm-hmm. or a beast mm-hmm. or it seems like it is the one for the bull from yeah what <laughs> and what is it and why is it the only one that appears in the game <laughs> you know it, it is this is weird like this, this strikes what, me as a weird set piece and if you go the sort of the, the the secret way that takes you up just next to that why does the giant 
light himself on fire with the ball <laughs> yep. nine times out of ten. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Oh, no. <laughs> it's like one of those kids that makes like a, a ball from elastic bands that just never knew when to stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then not stop soaking in kerosene. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If the ball's going, I'm going out with it. Yeah. <laughs> well, because it is fire based, they may know that uh, it will be effective against beasts, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I just wonder, mm-hmm. like, what what beasts? Like, it's kind of weird. Like, you never see they're hunting, that you never see what they're hunting. They're not aggro against each other, and they just hunt you. Mm-hmm. Um, and they say that you are, you know, like, there's all these little drops of like dialogue that you're the real enemy. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it's just kind of weird. Yeah. Like, it, it just, it just straight, like, it still just kind of wrinkles in a, in a strange way for me. Not in a way that, like, ruins anything. It just seemed off. They've got one of the the wolfies sort of strung up in that first, uh, the very first area where you encounter tons of them uh, in Mm -hmm. the early bit. Uh, There is, there's definitely a wolfie strung up over the fire in the middle. uh, And you do see some of the the, the patients that you find later on uh, in Old Yarn uh, strapped up to stuff as well. Maybe the beastie people. Mm. But they won't, uh, like, if you expose the werewolf creatures that you run into on the bridge to regular guys. Mm. And I, it was hard for me to do this, but I did it. Um, they will not fight each other. Cause I thought that would be awesome. Like yeah. they're hunting beasts. Like why don't, why don't the regular enemies aggro to the werewolves? Um, that would have been really badass. Uh, but, but, yeah. <laughs> well, there, there, regards... there are other enemies who fight each other, right? Like dogs will go after corpses if they see corpses. Uh, hmm. yeah. With oh. regards to the, um, you know, the, uh, the guy sort of with the, the fiery ball that chucks it. Those guys are um, covered in bandages as well. So maybe this is this is part of the the defense that underneath the bandages are, are burns, and that they see that you know that the beast's covered in fur and hair. That something that's that's on fire that that can crush them. Sort of maybe you know the uh, the the character in themselves with burns underneath those those bandages. Mm-hmm. That's that's a continual line of defense in a way that they they think that they can. I know. Yeah, they, they look, the enemies. They're like uh, Liam Baldwin, the Dark Shadow. <laughs> yeah. like, just cover all my bases there. <laughs> um, <laughs> Couldn't pick the right one. Yep. The uh, hmm. so, so after you you take these guys out, um, you continue on. There's a little bit. There's a couple of uh, werewolf guys mm-hmm. just hanging out to the right. They're not that big a deal. Yeah, they're guarding um, a bold hunter's mark, but that's it. Yeah. Yeah. In case you want to go back and spend your treasure before this uh, this thing, which is our next boss fight uh, with his gas coin. Beasts all over the shop. You'll be one of them, sooner or later. Um, which is great. Like the opening cutscene for this is great, and this boss fight is great. Yeah, this is an opening cutscene for a boss that has dialogue. Yeah, which is super cool. Which hasn't like happened mm-hmm. in a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's like it's like a Demon Souls thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, 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 I feel like it just hasn't happened for for quite some time. Um, the uh, so he is uh, hacking at something initially, mm-hmm. and uh, I love this. Like lots of beast in the shop. Yep. Or, you know, too many beasts in the shop, which, like, mm. it just sounds like a clo- clo- colloquialism. Colloquialism. Uh, thank you. Colloquialism. <laughs> um, that is just, like, puts him in a different place that I really like. Mm-hmm. You know, like, that's just, it's such, it sounds like a used expression or, like, a worn in expression. Yeah. Um, and as we'll find, he is from, a, from another area. Yes, he is. And uh, he gives you kind of a Kubrick stare, and his face is all bloody. My favorite detail about this, um, as he you know, gets ready to attack, is that he lets out this rattling cold breath. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yep. And he's got this, this wicked underbite, mm-hmm. which I really appreciate <laughs> as well during during that place. Um, and when he, you know, so he decides to actually, you know, take you out here and you actually get onto the fight. And the fight is really good. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a hunter versus hunter fight, which are my favorite in this in this game. Um, and this was the first time it happened, and it's so fucking hard. <laughs> um, like I died to this guy so many times. Yeah, um, I struggled. I struggled massively with this. I, I took, 
I took days. It, it just absolutely battered me. Um, I got him down to his final form firstly and then dived and tried a number of different options and did far, far worse. Um, and eventually I, I summoned someone in. Um, it's it's and, still and hard as, for me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I did, part of the, when I, when I did summon someone in, the success really came from the fact that he was distracted. I could then run him with a Kirk hammer and as the, the other hunter sort of did what he was doing, I could lay down the, the thwack. Mm -hmm. He's one of the few bosses that is kind of uh, trivialized by having help. Yeah. Uh, is, is this where I'd be an infuriating person and say, uh, it only took me two goes? Oh, <laughs> it, took me, it took me like four or five, honestly. Mostly because I figured out how to cheese him through the geometry. Mm. Oh no, I, I was I was quite I, I worked out how to parry him. Like, I, I just I don't know. I got into his rhythm quite quickly. Yeah, and I was like, Duh, yeah, you can't touch this fool. Did it's, you all use the music box? Because I I just didn't. I completely no. forgot about it. <laughs> yeah, I used. It. Yeah, I I didn't know about it until forty hours into the game. So you can you can examine the music box and it actually says like viola and Gascoigne. Mm -hmm. Sitting like, in a tree. <laughs> H U S N T I N G. <laughs> what, what what joke were you gonna go for? I, I was gonna go for mutating, but okay. Yep. <laughs> the, uh, but so like the thing, the reason why it was hard for me was because I this is the first hunter versus hunter fight you've mm -hmm. you've had, mm -hmm. and he has like he just has your move set with just like plus two moves. Yeah. Like if I was mm -hmm. fighting him with the axe, he could do everything I could do, and this was the first fight that was like that. And it just took me a really long time to get used to it um, after like a, a souls thing. Whereas like cleric beast, you know, you find the blind spot, you do some, like some of your souls tactics will help. This doesn't, this like it is for me, like my soul skills didn't, you know, didn't mm. carry over at all for this guy. Mm. <laughs> Poke him in the butt doesn't really translate to him, does it? <laughs> yeah. He'll, <laughs> never, he'll never show you his butt. Yeah. He's so <laughs> nimble. That's the problem. Yeah. I was using the threaded cane with this sort of uh, the Castlevania attack with it, <laughs> and 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 to a great degree of success. But as soon as he uh, he transformed, I was I was really struggling, especially that massive jump that he does. That jump oh, is yeah. so rough. Like well, and mm. the uh, the thing where he does the dragging, where he drags the axe and launches you, mm -hmm. yeah. because anything that knocks you down on the ground, there's nothing to stop him from just killing you while you're on the ground. Yeah. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. Which is I don't know how I feel about that. You still being vulnerable while you're on the ground change. Mm -hmm. in this game like it's led to a lot of frustration for me so far i think it, it leads into a, a a real fear that i have with with horror anyway where there's a madness that you can't reason with mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. when you get sort of that that transformation with that just there's nothing human left in there it's just pure rage and aggression and it's yeah. unreasoned and it's going to end you that i find genuinely terrifying and it's it's something that in, in movies isn't used often enough these days for for me, like I mean, the the that to me applies to the boss and how he just kind of you know he's so aggressive and he becomes more aggressive as you go. The idea that you can be hurt on the ground, um, it to me it's one of the couple of things in this game that I think undermine the regain system. Mm -hmm. um, the other being the 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 so the prevalence of grab attacks in the game. But if you get hit while you're on the ground, your chance to regain is gone. And like so much of the game is training you and building up you fighting around this system yeah mm. but there's there are a lot of things that knock you down and and that just it just ceases to work then yeah um so it just it like i i think i feel badly about it i think i don't i, I think i don't like it like you yeah. can be hit while you're on the ground like if i get flattened like a pancake like i don't think those invincibility frames would have you know impacted the game negatively if they would have been there mm. Yeah. Mm. You, you had your punishment <laughs> there's no need for two. totally yeah totally yeah. like I, I i'm you know and have him be aggressive like i love that he tries to interrupt heals mm -hmm. like he you know he shoots you mm. with his blunderbuss if you try to heal um i i like his aggression but just being able to like i it, to, what it does is it picks the combat down to being able to be one shot you know pretty early in the game like this is early in the game i don't have a lot of health if i get knocked down he can just depending on what combo he does can just kill me while i'm on the ground Mm. And then that that thing that hit me the first time becomes a one shot, and then with its you know consequent or it's a you know consequent boss run and load times and and the like, um, kind of just became a bummer. Um, like I really love this fight, but I don't. And this is where it happens the most. Like there aren't so many other bosses that can knock you down, um, but this guy can knock you down with impunity. Yeah, <laughs> and he only does so more as he you know transforms and progresses through these phases, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Something something should be noted. Um, I went through because I was trying to get like a full, you know, the full Gascoigne experience. 
um, before we recorded this episode. So I went out of my way to be able to summon him for the cleric beast fight. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's really interesting because he is a maniac. Yep, like he he's is not brilliant. like. <laughs> yeah, he's, well, he's and he's so aggressive down to where enemies would already be dead and he's just screaming and attacking where they once were. Yeah. <laughs> and the idea of them doing this characterization through a phantom yeah. is really cool. Like that is the if you're playing that way, that is the foreshadowing you can get that this guy is has lost his mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it can happen through a multiplayer mechanic that most people are going to miss. Um, yeah, I, really I, like I, I didn't do it. Um, how, do you, how do you summon him for the cleric beast fight? I think is it ju- you have to die once on the cleric. You have to get the insight and think then he becomes available. Yeah, You don't uh, have, you have to die, you just have to have yeah. insight. Oh, okay, because so, there's, a, there's a, like, a, a, like a dev note thing that shows up uh, just uh, from the cathedral, uh, the cathedral ward, central yarn and bonfire as you go down yeah. the steps. It's just there. It says, oh, you can summon. Oh, okay, I'll do that. And he stands up next to you. It's like, I know mm-hmm. you. And and Hello. he's taller. He's not like a, a a player model. Like he is his boss model. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. The first mm-hmm. thing he's like a full foot taller than you. Uh, right. And like uh, you, so you, it's because you get the item. Like you get one insight, so you get the summoning item. Yeah, is mm-hmm. what it is. But it, and, it, and it trivializes the cleric beast because he's a maniac. <laughs> um, and that, like I love that idea of that characterization through like a mechanic most people will miss. Yeah. yeah. Uh, interesting as well. You can actually use the music box, uh, and he will do a little chuckle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you have him, it's just super cool. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, and, and Vadi pointed this out in, in his video, um, you can bring him to his daughter's window and he does nothing. Yeah. <laughs> no, which is kind of a bummer. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah. So here, if you use the music box too much, like if you use it in the first phase um, and you don't, like, save one for phase two or phase three, he will transform quicker. Like he will yes. go full oh. beast. Really? Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I only use the music box in the third phase mm-hmm. and I do it to just huck Molotov cocktails like crazy. Yep. Um at the third which because he's so weak to fire, and that's kind of the the trick I eventually figured out. His first two phases were never that big of a deal for me. Mm-hmm. Um the third phase is just like that's where you knock me down and just murder me. Okay. Um interestingly, um in the pre-release version of this uh guy, when he killed you, he would say Umbasa. Yeah. Um that was cut out of the game. But it's a lot, you know, allowed a lot of people to to flip out and stuff. Um, <laughs> as it would. As it would. Um, mm. I don't think this takes place, you know, in Boletaria. Nope. Um, but we know that Father Gascoigne uh, came from a far off land and achieved this rank of father, which is not a church rank here. Yeah. Um, so it's possible he's from, you know, future Boletaria. <laughs> well, um, I, saw which are, a, I, I saw a video where um, someone was saying that uh, the end of Demon Souls gets rid of sort of most or all magic and perhaps mm. um this this was speculated after the after the alpha but perhaps bloodborne is set in a world after demon souls where magic has died but on a you know a, a yeah it's just it's land. Just these trinkets mm. that you can mm. use yeah that, i mean that could that could be um in the world i don't think it actually takes place on like the the crumbling <laughs> you know stones of, of boletaria mostly because mm. i haven't seen anything to make me yeah. you know want to yeah. think that you know Makes sense. I, do, I just, I do, just would really love a connection to that world because I, I love Demon Souls to pieces. Yeah, yeah and anything that, that even vaguely sort of you know ties a thread between the two, I do, would make me incredibly happy. This is Latry after they drain the blood swamp. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. into yeah. the canals. <laughs> um, you've got it in the uh, the the notes here, the dialogue where he, um, you know where he, before he transforms, he's like the sweet blood sings to me. But I love mm-hmm. when he says uh, he says too proud to show your true face to me mm-hmm. um, because he's saying. You are this too. Yep. Like you are, you have been drinking blood. Mm-hmm. Like you are a beast. You think you're better than me. Yeah. Um, you ain't so good. Like he, he's, he's the high school shop guy who's just like, <laughs> you know, you think you're something college boy, um, <laughs> not turning into a monster. Yep. But uh, like, oh, there's so much characterization and stuff that's just through this fight and through his mechanics mm-hmm. that uh, makes him one of my favorite boss fights yeah. and one of my favorite NPCs in the game. Yeah. And he's like the first mm. real introduction to what it means to be a hunter. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, because we've run into Eileen at this point, but we haven't seen her in action. Yeah. And this is like pl- placing Eileen right before him is really significant because it's she hunts, you know, hunters that have gone crazy. Here's what that is. And here's what it means. Yeah. You know, like this is the consequence of, mm. of you know, the dark side of, of this thing that you're you're dealing with. Mm-hmm. I think that so. once you once you encounter a, a hunter like this, it, it makes you realize that even though you've got the the bosses that are these massive, massive towering things, when you've got something that's the same size as you, which is as fast, if not faster than you, <laughs> it's more dangerous. And especially because 
in 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 many cases like uh like the the graveyard where he's running at you and you may be sort of trying to get your bearings when you've run away and you you might be moving past the tree or past some gravestones that's that's still a, a a huge degree of panic which maybe isn't there with the bigger bosses because you can't miss them mm-hmm. yeah you're talking about yeah so the 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 thing we were mentioning about uh, him being a regular sized guy also means that the geometry can play in in a way it can't with a bigger boss fight. Like this isn't just like a big empty arena. This is a real this is a, a soul style graveyard where there are no rows. Yeah. Ever like everyone they just build vertically, I guess. Because every <laughs> graveyard tiny overlaps. stupid gravestones you can get stuck on like an idiot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well you can use them as cover. Like yeah. this is a cover based shooter section a little bit. But only it feels like managed a... to maneuver behind them. <laughs> <laughs> It almost feels like a, a child's playset, or you know, like when I was a little, and, and maybe there'd be like a a building site or something, and you you climb in there and you'd be clambering on things. It feels very, I don't know. It feels, it just it, again, it feels like a um, like a very considered place, um, mm. and I, I, that mm. it it still terrifies me, even when I'm coming from the opposite direction. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, from this, as I did the other the other day, and met somebody else um, yes. who was down there who destroyed me. Which we'll uh, talk about in we're two nearly episodes there. time. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I, I do have one more theory about Gascoigne. Um, I think the the general consensus, like the general idea, is that people think he comes from somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not the impression I got from his gear because uh, I, I I bought it as soon as I could because it's cool as shit. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And the gear, the, the shawl he's got is uh, is actually a part of the Healing Church's shawl. Uh, and it says that he would eventually part ways with it. So maybe he was part of the Healing Church and uh, maybe got a bit beasted up and went a bit nuts and left and then came back. Yeah. Is how I always read that. So maybe he started the church and got maybe disillusioned with it and left and, and then maybe come back maybe for his wife. Mm-hmm. I, I think I think both are true. Like yeah. I think that he he did join the church, mm-hmm. um, and you can tell that because not only that, but he also has a, he has an eye eye fold or blindfold mm-hmm. on yes. just under his hat. So like he did join the church prior to that. Yeah. I think he is from somewhere else. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd go with that. Yep. Yeah. So out and in and out and in. Yeah. He was definitely associated with the church because he is a hunter and he he uh, he partnered with Henrik, who is somebody who yeah. will meet. Later. He, he he played the hokey cokey with all of Yarnum. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you put your whole self in and your yeah. whole self yeah. out. Yeah. He he spent enough time in some other society to have earned and you know to own the uh, the, the the title of father, right? Mm. Yeah, and to use this different kind of slang, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, and mm. you know, be it Umbasa, which was actually cut, but also this like you know, so many beasts in the shop. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of thing. He's After, all over the shop. <laughs> all over the shop. I love it. So, I mean, yeah. like, is that from somewhere else though? He's he, he's referring to the hunter's workshop though, right? Where where all of this comes from? Uh, no, no, I, I, I didn't. That's I just didn't a saying. That, yeah. just, that is a saying. It is an yeah, it is. Way. It's, oh, a, it's all over it's a, the shop. Huh. Yeah, it means yeah. It means it's sort of here, there, and everywhere. It's uh, yeah, that is a an, an English colloquialism. Oh, you, th- you thought he was referring to the hunter's workshop? I mean, no, that, that, that's the closest thing that has the name shop in it or the word shop. No, I, I think it is just saying that they're, they're, they're everywhere. You ah, know, okay. like, right. mm. Yeah, like, I, I assumed I didn't. I, I found out it was actually an expression later. Mm-hmm. Even when mm-hmm. I first heard it, though, the fact that he's just in a graveyard hacking apart mm-hmm. a thing and the way he says it where it just sounds like, hey, a lot of work to do. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> that's what it, it made me sit think. But the idea of it being like him referring to the workshop is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I don't think he actually is, but that's in, like it's, it's a neat thing to think about. This, just this, this, hate, it's just him hating Mondays, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's like, <laughs> he's just hacking apart normal. All, all these beasts piling up. <laughs> yeah, with the, with, push. The, with the saying sort of generally, it can be like it can mean sort of as a large expanse, like oh, it's all over the shop. Or say okay. if somebody is wandering through the streets junk, drunk. Like somebody might say, yeah. "Oh yeah, he's all over the shop." Like with somebody yeah. sort of wobbling around and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, so mm-hmm. that's how it's uh, yeah. it's 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 generally used. Yeah. Whereas over here, if somebody's crushing it, we will say they're wrecking shop. But all mm-hmm. oh, right. Yeah. Oh. The uh, so after you kill him, he drops the uh, Erden tomb key, um, which is not spelled that way, but people say it that way. So I Erden? start really? saying, or that's how NPCs say it in the game. Huh. Is Erden, Erden, but there's no R in there. But everyone who says Erden says Erden. Huh. Um, which I always say, you know, uh, uh, Odin. Yeah, Odin. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, Erden is how people say it. Yeah. So, um, but he drops that and the, the key, you know, actually is the, the way to get into the, the chapel. Mm-hmm. 
there. Yes, you are very much going through the uh, the, the the back door, and in fact, where you fought him is the tomb of Erden. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, interestingly, uh, there's a roof nearby, mm-hmm. and the roof is uh, where his wife landed. <laughs> where he let him after he tossed her. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Clearly, uh, chucked her up there. Yeah. Which is unfortunate. Yeah, and you or, know that. Oh, or, okay, all right, all right. Or yeah. discovered her there. Mm. Maybe she went out to find him and got wrecked, oh. and that made him go a bit nuts. Oh, that put him over the edge. Maybe, yeah. Huh. And maybe hacking apart the beast that killed her. Yeah, possibly. I mean, when I when I first went there, it was just body because I hadn't started the quest. I was like, oh look, a body. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, maybe she was already there, and he found her, and then that he's, he's, he's lost his mind. Oh yeah, yeah like well, she she made a she made a beeline for the cathedral, thinking it was going to be safe there, and got waylaid. Hmm. Yeah. Well, she so was you, looking, she was looking play, for him. Yeah. She wasn't. Yeah. You know. So. So when you, you play the little music box, and he's like, "Oh no, she's dead," <laughs> and it yeah, reminds and it, him. Yeah. It's a, it's he's a more got, charitable read for him. Like it, it does make him come off less like the the whole thing. The only reason why I still think that he maybe did it was just the idea of like we you know we play this music box for dad when he forgets. Mm-hmm. Mm. Like that like it just it's it in my head canon is more satisfying that he was always a dangerous thing. Mm-hmm. You know mm. that they were kind of living with. But you know, I don't think they were just wig, wigging out wigging out in the living room. Just like he's like yeah. dad stop it dad. Ah! <laughs> no I I kind of I kind of wondered if. Um, she she met him, and because of these these instances where he where he kind of loses it and transforms, maybe something like that happened, and she fell because it mm-hmm. doesn't look like like she's been torn apart. It, it looks like she's fell, mm-hmm. uh, she's fallen. Sorry, and and yeah, I, I just think that that ties into more of a tragedy with the character. That there are these sort of spells where he loses himself, and he's mm-hmm. he's actually lost his wife in the in the process. And, and maybe had, that is the is again the reaction sort of afterwards where he's he's taking that out on the beast. Yeah. He has the key. She died pretty much right up against the door. It's possible that she couldn't proceed any further and got mm. killed by something else and you know he was the one who could have let her in. Yeah. Possible. Yeah. yeah. The 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 it depends. It it also depends a little bit on how much you want to ride the the alcoholism mm-hmm. kind of metaphor for it too. Mm. Um because it's a real classic like you know on you know the the alcoholic accidentally hurting mm-hmm. you know somebody close to him yeah is a real thing so yeah it, it is interesting there's lots of different kind of ways that it could go um with this this brooch that you get from from Violetta you can actually bring it back to the little girl mm-hmm. and uh and, Which is and what I did <laughs> yeah 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 and that's so, the way to end that quest like you know you 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 show that to her both of your parents are dead goodbye little yeah. girl. Yep. Yeah, it destroyed me. That, that absolutely destroyed yep. me. I remember even the, the the next day at work, like it was it was coming back to mind, and I was, you know, getting a lump in my throat and stuff. But to be to be affected by a game even beyond playing it, that's 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 one of the the, the rare qualities of it. I think yeah. it's 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 a classic. It's the same thing as giving the uh, the chaos pyromancy to um, the pyromancer in Dark Souls One. Mm-hmm. Where like you think that completing the quest and giving somebody something good is going to be good for them, and it's mm-hmm. not. Yeah. Um, there's no good way to end this quest. No. You know, but you can extend it by not giving her the brooch. Yeah. And I love that it requires this like we're so trained in video games. If somebody asks for something, we have to give it to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but this idea that like you actually have to stop and think like, what kind of what damage would I be doing to a young girl mm-hmm. to do this? You know. Yeah. I mean, the the Souls games and and with Bloodborne again, it it feels very much like the original fairy tales, mm-hmm. like that mm-hmm. they were originally told to children to frighten them. Uh, mm-hmm. And that, that this is, this is what it feels like again, that there's this kind of a sting in the tail, but a, uh, a classic unforgettable story that, that that's, that's wrapped around it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If you refuse to give it to her, um, you eventually can direct her to a couple of safe spaces. We only know about one of them now, Yosefka's clinic. Mm-hmm. And as we mentioned, that's probably a bad idea. Yep. Um, but eventually we're going to learn about the cathedral, which we can send her to. Yeah. And uh, and she, that doesn't end well either. Yeah. So you, you've helped her out. You know, she says, mommy and daddy must be out there. And you tell her like, oh, you can go to this place. And she says, I love you almost as much as I love mom and dad and granddad. Granddad being Henrik, probably. Yeah. So you can, given that he's so old. Yeah. So you, <laughs> you can again, the, del- the delivery of that line is incredible. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so really, straightforward really... and earnest. Yeah. Yeah. But that, unfortunately, I, <laughs> yeah, but decide, she said she decides to take the sewer route. Yep. Um, <laughs> which like little girls love sewers and unfortunately gets eaten by the pig. Yeah. So mm. <laughs> if you do some tricky reloading and go back down there and kill this 
uh, this uh, the, this beast. Uh, after you realize that uh, she never made it to the cathedral, you pick up a red ribbon for the messengers. Like the messengers wear it as a uh, uh, as a rite of mourning, right? But it wasn't originally red, um, so you're yep. only led to <laughs> you know it's very easy to put those pieces together. Yes. And that yeah. actually will will square with the the finality of this mm-hmm. this quest, which we'll get to a bit later. Yeah, mm. but I mean that's um, that's a. I mean, I was first pointed out to this bit by the the guys at the You Died uh, blog. Um, mm-hmm. Excellent blog, everyone read it. Um, but I I wouldn't have made that. I wouldn't have gone down there again. Uh, yeah. I I, don't, I wouldn't have seen a point to going back down there. I could just warp. Yeah, me, me <laughs> either. Um, yeah, mm. I, w- I would not have done it either. But I, I just I read about it. But it's interesting. Like it it mm. it is it is interesting. And it is sad, um, and uh, and continues to be sad. Again, this is the second time where it's like this yeah. thing that you thought was good is bad, and yeah. I'm on board. And then the third or you can actually be a cool guy and and keep her alive by crushing the gem in front of the window. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, just, I haven't got yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, smash. And then she um, never leaves, and you technically win. Yeah, you like, just leave her alone. What kind of asshole are you to do that? Now nah, she lives. Nah, I haven't seen anything to do with him on crush. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like the Solaire endings where you just don't, you know, just leave him alone yeah. at a certain point. Like you kill the the chaos bugs and he doesn't show up again, but he does the he'll you can summon him, but he's, you know, he's no longer, yeah he's just no longer it's gonna happen. Um, so that's her that's it for her for now. Um, yeah. We're going the back way into the cathedral. Um, there's a bunch of uh, coffins and there's this cool little library which I really like <laughs> yep. with a, with, a, with an appearance library. of a, a, a globe. Yep, and I'm sure there's some astrolabes. Yep. Oh yeah, there's definitely out. some astrolabes on the uh, on the table. Two of yep. them, in fact, yep. bright gold and shining in all their splendor. God, do I love astrolabes? Oh man, <laughs> there's been a few down. times in that room where I've been wandering around, and especially when I've got headphones on and I've knocked over some books, and I've been like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, what? Da- damn girl, do them astrolabes break good? <laughs> yeah. I had to. My uh, Laura, my wife, was watching, and we were playing, and she said that broke really well, so I had to go and save and come back and do it again. <laughs> Look at this it, smash! Hey! You know, there, there's some, there's a couple areas we're coming up on. There are some really good like reeks of rolling. Um, <laughs> oh god, yeah. that's very yeah. fun to smash through. Yeah. So what I, what I ought to do, and I, I meant to do this last night when I was uh, replaying this for the show, but I didn't. Um, is pull out the monocular and actually check out those astrolabes to see mm-hmm. what the uh, what the cosmology or at least the local solar system looks like, um, hmm. and see if that uh, has any if there are any cosmic truths hidden in those alignments. I wish the monocular was better. Yeah, me too. Like it, it, it allows you to get like an inch closer. Yep. Like it is. It is. I wish it was. It wasn't so shitty. Um, you find a note here though, um, as I well on your way, note. which is super, super good. And I love these little hinting, like dropping details that just suggest. It's not you know, a hint. It's telling you exactly what it is, but you have no context for it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so like the, uh, it's similar to remember we talked about in Dark Souls Two, where it's like. You know, knowing that there was a such thing as the skeleton lords didn't ruin the skeleton lords for me. Yep. It just made every time I opened the door, I was like, maybe there'll be some skeleton lords. In <laughs> if you play your cards right, there might be a skeleton lord. Yeah, you might, you might, you might be a skeleton lord. The, um, <laughs> but but this, this whole time I was like, oh, the Bergenworth spider. Oh, God. That sounds cool. Is that like, a dude? Like, is he, I, is he, a, is he like, a, like a serial throat slitter? The Bergenworth spider. You I, I'm way into it. <laughs> Um, and he hides all manner of rituals. Yep. Yes. <laughs> see, I first linked this. I thought this was uh, in the alpha when you see the thing that's hanging out on the wall that isn't there in the main game. Yeah. Uh, in the alpha, that thing. I thought it meant that mm-hmm. for the longest mm-hmm. time a- until obviously you realize it isn't, but spur spoilers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Bergenworth is such a cool thing to say as well. I know, right? Rolls it's a really tongue. good name. Yeah. yeah. I had a- I- I had a tune like a little while ago that I want to start up a Bloodborne themed uh, uh, restaurant called Bergenworth. Yeah, you know. Ber- Bergenworth. Yeah, Bergenworth. The the uh, uh, <laughs> I was just making it work for audio. Yep. Um, I wasn't trying to cut step on your joke. I know. The um I can't wait for when we actually meet the Bergenworth spider. Like I want like a, a body like prepare to die video on the <laughs> Bergenworth spider. Like there there that character is is great. Mm-hmm. Um and then that's that's been a very fun to like find the hidden stuff there. Mm-hmm. Um we also find a really important item here. Um, the blood blood gem workshop tool. Can I take us back to uh, the uh, like just one line in the uh, in, in that note? Yes. Which again, revealing that everybody's kind of losing their mind, it makes my head shudder uncontrollably. Mm. I just picture somebody full Jacob's laddering at that. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it is. It is an in universe SMH. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry. Continue. I'm sorry. That's okay. The blood, the, the blood workshop. Um. 
yeah, so this is this is a just an upgrade tool mm -hmm. that you get that allows you to to slot your weapons with a uh, with gems. Mm -hmm. At this point, which is useful, but you may not have may not even have any gems at this point. Yeah, um, we should note that that um, that that uh, brooch, that red brooch that you had before, you can smash that and get a gem mm -hmm. if you want to, and it's not bad. But most of the storyline related gems you get get quickly outclassed by the the ones you can find randomly. Yeah. Mm. Yep. But I, I love the little the, the line of text. It's, it's about kneading them in, like you're just just mushing it in there, like get in <laughs> yeah. there, go on. Uh, yes, and it takes on uh, properties of that gem as blood defines an organism. Yes, yeah, because the the gems are actually frozen blood. Mm -hmm. um, blood, 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 yeah. blood. Is it metal, Gary? <laughs> it is very metal. Is it metal, so CJ? <laughs> is it metal, Patty? <laughs> Everything's oh. metal in this. <laughs> yep. It's Every awesome. single shot of this game is an album cover. <laughs> now you see that that ties back into our uh, our chat on Demon Souls, which was a a really ace laugh. I enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and then then you open the door to the uh, the cathedral, and we get a cutscene that we will cover next episode. Yeah, um, because this is where our episode ends. Mm -hmm. um, so so we we you know people who thought that it was weird they were breaking up Central Yarnum into two parts. There's so much stuff there. <laughs> yeah, like it is so <laughs> dense. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so do we have any kind of, before we move on, any kind of final thoughts or anything we didn't cover uh, in the Central Yardim verse? No, I, I, I think it's, I think it's a, um, I don't know, Yardim, Yardim in of itself is this twisting, turning uh, conundrum, which I, I really like. There's, um, it reminds me a little bit of, um, I mean, Scholar of the First Sin at the moment in um, the Crown of the Iron King. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that there's, there's certain points where I think I've got, I've got my bearings, but I've not. Um, mm -hmm. And the the twisting and turning of the of the, of the pathways and the uh, I don't know. It's it's fun to explore and and think that you know where you are, but continually find these little either shortcuts or um, things that you've not discovered, and uh, and the whole experience sort of broadens out a, a, a great deal. Plus, you know, there's that that moment with a the little girl, which was my anchor to the game. In a in a huge way, my emotional anchor. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. See, for me, Century Arnhem is is the point where uh, you sort of you get a really good feel for how the game is going to crisscross over on itself. It's that feeling of right, I can see something down there. Have I been there before? Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. I've been there. Which means does that mean I can get over there? And what's that place? And it just enforces that thing of if you can see it, you're probably going there. <laughs> yeah, and it all looks horrifying. <laughs> It does. It does a really good job. I think that this area for me, um, as good as it is, uh, and we talked about this, I got a little like fatigue of of sameness mm -hmm. of of area mm -hmm. design. As, as beautiful as it is, I was very happy when I started getting into different kind of color palettes, yeah. which we start to get into here. But then, really, after that, when we start kind of going through some forested areas, that's where the you know that and beyond is where the, the game really kind of came alive for me. But this, uh, you know, as far as a first and. That is influenced, of course, by how much time I spent here because I died like a thousand times because <laughs> it was early on in a Souls, yeah, Souls game. And for me, like I had pretty much the same feeling, which is it's immensely satisfying to um, kind of be in the moment and you know, kind of like in the middle of this maze, and then later on hold the entirety of it, in, uh, the entirety of it in your head. You know, mm -hmm. like as you go on, like it's kind of like, oh, this felt really confusing. But throughout the course of kind of like learning this and mastering it and, you know, kind of uh, going through and puncturing all these holes throughout it, you, you you figure out a way to cut these lines to get where you need to go, wherever it is. And so that turns mm -hmm. kind of like one static piece of geometry that you have to go through into this thing that can change depending on what you're trying to accomplish in it. Yeah, um, yeah. and you know, like that, th that does cut both ways. Like Gary said, it does, you know, get a little bit samey after a little while, even though you have the set pieces like the dry docks or the bridge or whatever, but, um, as like an opening salvo in this, it definitely sets a tone. Yeah. And it does, it does so pretty well. Um, we're, we're going to get to another area with a different color palette next episode. Um, we're not going to spend a lot of time in the cathedral ward, which we just opened up because it's not totally open yet, unless we want to go buy like an item for more souls than we can afford. Um, so we're going to uh, go the way that I think the game intends you to, mm -hmm. head on around to Old Yarnum, and we're going to be joined by Matt Lees. Yes. Um, so listeners may know uh, Matt Lees. He does a podcast called Daft Souls. Mm -hmm. He has a, a channel on YouTube where he does kind of uh, game critiques and everything. We're very excited to have him. Mm -hmm. um, I just shot him an email with detailing things and, and uh, point out that the first time I ran into him was I was looking online for people who felt the same way about Bioshock Infinite that I felt <laughs> and uh, and had his uh, kind of deconstruction of that game. And I was very happy to 
to, to, to have somebody articulate very well some things that I thought didn't work in that game. Um, but he's, he's a huge Bloodborne fan. He's been doing Let's Plays and stuff, and we're really happy to have him. Yeah, some of his, uh, um, his Pantsman uh, streams on uh, when he was at Video Gamer. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I tuned into to all of those, and they were fantastic. He even got his kit off in, uh, <laughs> in one, of, <laughs> one of the later ones just because somebody dared him. <laughs> uh, in, in the first ep- first run where it was like if you get to the end wearing no armor and with your character in just their underpants will you get into your underpants and he foolishly said yes <laughs> <laughs> well played sir well played yeah that's pretty good yeah, it's it's gonna be super good. Yeah, you the, call uh, that a pants man. This is a pants man. <laughs> <laughs> you call that not wearing pants? I'm not wearing pants. You call that um, a penis? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you broke me. <laughs> that ties in with disgusting connotations. Take that back. <laughs> yeah, we we don't have to have literally a dick measuring contest. <laughs> Uh, the, um, Pull that a tape measure. Yeah, leave, leave this to, to figurative dick measuring contest. This is the internet. That's what it's for, damn it. <laughs> um, where where can uh, where can people find you guys? Uh, uh, Twenty minutes. Where can people find you on the? I had to clarify. Like you were just gonna be like, well, I'm at Cole Ross at Twitter. dot com. Um, CJ and, and Patty. Where can people find you on online? Uh, probably the best place to find is if you go onto Twitter at Twin Humanities. Uh, it's got links to all the shows that we do. Uh, we've got Twin Humanities in itself, which is the Souls games and Bloodborne. Uh, we also do um, a podcast called Oh the Humanities, where we natter about other games and stuff we've been watching, and really kind of whatever leaps to mind that that isn't the the Soul stuff. Um, we've also got Twin Destiny, which we kind of really have to get back to. Uh, yeah, we do. It's a lot been of fun. A while. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with that one. But uh, yeah, bounce onto there, say hello. Um, have a listen to some of the daft stuff that we've done in in the past and hope you enjoy it and again thank you very much for, for having us on it's a we're both fans so it's a a, a real yeah. honor to be on it yeah uh, and worth noting as well all of our uh, stuff we also put all our shows up on youtube as well uh for those of you who like to just click a button and listen <laughs> uh you can find that i think it's youtube slash twin humanities pod is it something like that uh, just no, google it can. just google it in youtube you'll find it you, uh, you, you can also find that stuff. yeah you, you'll also find one or two um uh, cooking videos on there as well, which my mother is incredibly proud of. <laughs> Dark Souls cooking videos, should we say? Yeah, those, yeah, those are Dark really Souls. those are really charming. I've watched mm-hmm. those where you do the uh, the kind of Dark Souls inspired recipes with your with your wife. Mm-hmm. And those I, are I still cute. drink Estes Flask cocktails. They're really nice. <laughs> <laughs> for for the listeners, can you lay out what's in an Estes Flask? Yeah, uh, well, you have to get a good sized, like a good shaped glass for it. You have to get an actual flask where it doesn't taste right. Okay. Uh, the, comp- the 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 ingredients to the Estes Flask is uh, gin. Uh, Pims and Sunny Delight. Mm. It's better than it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> Which is probably for the best. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what really the greatest There's ingredient. also the, the non alcoholic version as well, which is Sunny Delight. <laughs> 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 so I've got you covered, Tito. Don't see what you did there, you culinary genius. <laughs> <laughs> Addition by subtraction. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, thank you guys again. Yeah, it's uh, delightful. Uh, like just, uh, it's it's so <laughs> awesome to have you guys on here. No proper so laugh. Thank you very much indeed. Well, thanks, it. thanks so much for having us. This has been this has been really, really, really good. And it is like we've crossed the streams a little bit <laughs> in the good way, though. And like. And yeah. maybe not that bad. And you know what? Let's let's retire crossing the streams and say it's like we sprayed ourselves with feel good junk from the end of uh, Ghostbusters Two instead. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wondering where you were the... going with that for a minute. <laughs> hey Gary, can you never say feel good junk again? Yeah. Last time I, I, I got sprayed someone shower. with feel feel good junk, they said I ruined that christening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, does anyone else need a shower now? I, I <laughs> yeah. Hot and cold Dude. running feel good junk. Yeah, just gonna go, sh- go shower and feel good junk. Um, yeah, that's, kind of that junk. feel good junk has got pims in it, gin, <laughs> and uh, suddenly delight. You, you call that feel good junk? <laughs> you, you can't. You can't make a version feel good junk because as soon as you do, it's just no longer. But the um, what uh, what can if people want to feel good about uh, get some feel good junk, Cole? What can they do for us? 
Well, um, they nice can segue. support us. <laughs> <laughs> Segway game on point. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Um, well, we have a Patreon. Uh, going on uh, they can go to duckfeed.tv slash patreon kick us a couple of bucks we're figuring out the uh, the next goals and such and um, uh, that, that, that is all tremendously appreciated in terms of uh, helping us do these and dedicate the time to them that we really uh, need to dedicate to them mm-hmm. yeah and 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 what we're kind of talking and kicking around for our next goal is something I'm pretty excited about yeah. so Hopefully that will work out the way that uh, hopefully it'll work out. Um, you can also leave us ratings and reviews on iTunes, um, post about us on blogs, throw us on Reddit. All that stuff is really appreciated. Anything that uh, helps people hear about the show, if you yes. can't contribute financially, um, that is honestly just as good. Yep. To that point, yeah. we, you know, all of our stuff is on SoundCloud. It is at soundcloud.com slash bonfireside chat. You can embed those players. You can point people to an especially cogent point that we made if we ever made one. Um, yeah, <laughs> you know, listen. Um, these guys talk about cum. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> a different show. <laughs> like, yeah, the, uh, and that, that's usually abject suffering, but it's made a little bit of a, a cameo, little cameo appearance. <laughs> and, uh, See what you did there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it wasn't subtle. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of I, I dropped the I dropped the C bomb at work today, and people really they laughed nervously. <laughs> Yeah, it is. You know, people don't like talking about cum, but it's only natural. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anywho. Um, so, yeah, come on over to our Facebook as well. Oh, wait. Oh, 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 forward slash on Fireside Chat and uh, join the discussion there. I uh, appreciate it. I think that's probably about it. Just about. Other than, like, you know, so duckfeed.tv, it's a place for podcasts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We have other shows, and they uh, some of them talk about come more, some of them talk about come less. All of them talk about Dark Souls less. Check the come rating. Yeah. yeah. Come, Check the come C on, score on each episode. <laughs> Check out how many dollops it has out of five. Oh, ah. <laughs> tell, tell you how safe it is. Three. Three ropes. Yeah. <laughs> Why I like is these rope- guys. I got a lot of spunk. <laughs> <laughs> Why is ropes grosser than dollops? It know. is. I don't know why though. Like that's as a unit of measurement. <laughs> Rope supplies it, motion. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I guess that's it. Yeah, and My viscosity. Like, it is a. <laughs> it implies a texture that I don't care for. Anywho, um, <laughs> this is a classy thing. If Matt Lee's happens to be listening, it's you know, it doesn't have to be like this. And, <laughs> it's up to you. <laughs> Bring some class to the door. We just lowered the tone, and, and you just you just you just limboed underneath it. Yeah, I, hope, I hope that we didn't just you know literally get rid of every guest that we'll we'll have. Now. Make, make uh, sure you don't touch it as you go underneath it. Though. We're gonna have, we have to buy like Gallagher three a copy of Bloodborne so he can be on the show because <laughs> the level of discourse that we have. Um, anywho, uh, what should they do until next time, Cole? Uh, they should remember that morning always comes. That's because a hunter must. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, <boss. laughs> yeah. Okay, so I decided I decided that I ought to that, that I ought to plan those out so when Gary asks me I don't panic and freeze and say the same thing. So I wrote that down at lunch earlier today. <laughs> it, was, it was prescient. You got the shining. <laughs> oh, cool boss. <laughs> <laughs> and we all pray that we will have far more soon 